All right. All right, Chris, man. Um, it's good to get you on, man. Um, let's get into uh, the fight coming up. B2 Fighting Series 174. You are back. This fight sure. was comes, man. Um, take us through the process of uh, getting this fight up. Um, so I last fought May 21st for B2, same promotion. And then, um, I don't know, I was looking for another fight. We had we were looking for something else, but something else didn't pop up. So B2, I seen that they stay active every weekend and I'm pretty good, good with those guys. So, uh, they hit me up and, you know, we just started chatting it up and then we were supposed to fight July 30th in Tennessee, but I guess they had canceled that card. And then they were like, Hey, we want you to headline the August 27th and, uh, Lake Charles, Louisiana card. And I was like, all right, we'll do it. All right, so when you heard the name uh, Floyd Jones, was that the first opponent that they offered you? Um, I think they offered me a couple of names, but I think something happened with those. I think a couple of guys may, may not have been able to make weight by then, or they were maybe busy. So um, the matchmakers were like, hey, we're going to get you somebody. We're going to get you somebody. And then uh, they, uh, they offered me this guy, and I instantly accepted. Then, you know, that's kind of how it went down. So is your mentality right now is just to take a fight with whoever you can because it's just hard to find fights for you? Uh, yeah, that's that's the thing. You got to accept, you know, at this point in time in my career, you got to accept. Um, you have to accept all kind of fights, any fights, no matter how good or bad they are. You, you've got to accept those fights just because, if you know, you want to make it to the top level. Those are the fights you got to take. Definitely, definitely. And uh, let's get into the last fight. It was... Uh, on short notice, another uh, mm -hmm. a main event, you know what I mean? And uh, you got the second round ground mm -hmm. and pound finish. Uh, what did you think? You know, did that fight play out the way you wanted? Uh, yeah, it did. It did, but uh, I'm still not content with it. I, I felt like I could have put on a better performance, but hats off to my opponent, man. He, he came in tough. It was a short notice fight for him, too. Mm -hmm. And uh, he came in really, really tough. We knew he was going to be tough, but he was super tough. And, uh you know, he, he came to fight. I think the first round, uh, I went back to the, the corner and I was like, man, this fight could go either way in the first round. So yeah. we, we kind of had to make an adjustment the second round. It played in my favor. Yeah, what did you think of that first round, man? A lot of people really, really enjoyed that. Uh, Man, I, I wanted to I wanted to stand and bang with him. I knew he had he had a boxing background. I was like, all right, that'd be fun. You know, see what I can do. I mean, dude hit like a Mack truck. He hit really hard. And we got a little exchange, and he caught me with some good ones. He did a great job of going high, low, high. And uh, but I was just like, man, we got to give the crowd what they want. So mm -hmm. let's do it. Yeah, and, you know, you got the finish. And I was re-watching that, that fight. And the commentators, man, they were saying that it was a, a early stoppage, dude. They were screaming and yelling, and I was just like, I don't know. You're dominating him pretty badly for a long time, and he couldn't get out. Yeah, uh, when it happened, I was I knew that it would have ended in that position. But when it happened, I was like, all right, I, I kind of want to do more damage, honestly. But I think like maybe one or two more seconds, it still would have been in the same position. But uh, early stoppage or not, you know, things happen, man. Yeah, it's a stoppage, man. And uh, yeah. <laughs> you, just add an, <laughs> you just add another one to the to the list. Now, Floyd Jones, you know, what do you think of him in, in the whole matchup? Uh, I think it's a good matchup, man. I think it's a good matchup. He He's from Michigan, so, of course, he's going to have that Michigan wrestling. Um, and he's not scared to, he's not scared to throw, man. So he'll, he'll get in there and bang. Uh, he's got some good, he's got some good wins on his record, man. So that's, uh, that's number one thing to me. He's no pushover. He's no slouch. I believe he's either a purple belt or brown belt in Brazilian jiu-jitsu. So mm -hmm. he's a real rounder, mm -hmm. and he looks apart, man. He's a muscular guy, and he trains with some good people. So I think it's going to be a, a great, a great fight for me. Do you do you look at him as a a specialist rather than like a like an all around fighter? I don't know. I think I look at him as all around fighter because I mean he could do jiu-jitsu. Mm -hmm. He's got the wrestling. Uh, and he's not throw, scared to throw some kicks and, and just mix it up. So I would definitely think he's all around fighter, in my opinion. All right, all right. Um, and did you did you get a chance to watch his last fight against uh, Marcus Smallman? Uh, I've seen a little bit of it, not too much, but uh, I watched like yeah, a little bit of that fight and then the fight before against another guy in Florida. Um, so yeah, he's uh, he's definitely game. 
it, it really sticks out that his ground game, you know what I mean, like his grappling, that's something that most likely will uh, be something that he's going to implement against you and heavily against you. When you have something like something so clear in front of you, you know what I mean, what does that do to your mentality during a, like a camp or during training sessions? Uh, man, just got to stick to, you know, what we've been working on, stick to the guns and, and just making sure me and my coaches are keeping communication on, you know, what the game plan is, not, not changing anything up in the middle of camp and just, you know, trusting them and just believing in myself that I'm going to go in there and then just do what I do best. Uh, I believe I can wrestle. I know I can do jiu-jitsu as well. I, I have both of those in, in my arsenal as well. So um, if it goes there, it goes there. Uh, I'm definitely not going to be, you know, terrified. The guy's good. Don't get me wrong. The guy, the guy's good. He's got some tricks up his sleeves, but um, I'm, I like the ground as well. So we, we just we just sharpening the tools and, and, and add things. And like I said, stick to the game plan. Where are you splitting your time for this training camp? Uh, so I'm at Genesis, man. I, I, I coach uh, at a Spartan Fit in Springtown, Texas. I do a lot of my jiu-jitsu there. Those guys help me, too, uh, with my students. And then uh, Genesis Jiu-Jitsu with uh, Eric Sands, Kendrick Williams, uh, Mark De La Rosa, Malik Lewis, Colton Loud, Rod Moore, um, Amadeo Cristiano. I think I'm saying his last name right. <laughs> uh, he has over, like, 87 professional Muay Thai fights. So we, we have a pretty solid uh, crew there. A couple of days ago, you know, we just saw the Ultimate Fighter finale and one of the one of the girls, you know, she only had four fights uh -huh. and now she's in the UFC. Do you feel like it's I don't know if I don't want to say it's easier, but there's more opportunity to get into the bigger promotions now compared to, let's say, five years ago, uh, at, you know, without a large record, you know, what I mean, without a big, big record. Absolutely. I think it's a little easier now because like they're looking, they're always looking for a new talent, man. Yeah, they're always looking for new talent. Um, and it's also, I think it's also about your management team and like who you know, who's in your corner as well. Uh, but yeah, I think it's, oh, I think it's a little harder for men mm -hmm. than, than the women. But yeah, I think it's, it's getting that way. Like they just want to bring up new talent. And I think like once you get there, you can get that first fight. The hardest thing is staying there. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you can, you can get there. Sorry, um, you can get there, um, but you just got to make an impression on the boss man and stay in there. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, a lot of truth to that, man. Um, yeah, with the with this fight, man. So, how do you expect to perform, man? You're you're undefeated, right? Mm -hmm. And you know you just want to extend your undefeated record because it looks pretty and it looks nice in MMA. What do you mm -hmm. what do you want to do? Man, I just want to, every fight, man, I go into, I want to show, I want to show that I'm a better fighter every single fight. And I really feel like I've done that. So I'm, I'm going to try my hardest to stick to that, to show that I'm a better fighter than I was last fight. That's, that's what I want to prove. Um, of course, we always want to win, but I'm a humble guy and I know things happen in there. You never know what could happen. Injuries, anything, uh, you know. Floyd may come out and be the better fighter that night. You, you never know what can happen. But one thing about it, two things for sure, I'm going to show that I'm a better fighter than I was last fight. You have uh, two no contests, right, on your professional yes. record. And, you know, going through those fights and, and, and going through those experiences, what did you take away? What did you learn from that? Um, the first no contest I got, I actually was declared the winner that night. Uh, I got the guy, actually, he, uh, I broke my ankle in a couple places and tore some ligaments. He caught me in a heel hook. He caught me in a heel hook, and then I started, I went for a rear naked choke, finished him. I went for a bar arm, like in wrestling, and I trapped his hand, and he was crying about me uh, grabbing his finger in his glove, which was weird. I don't know, so they, they brung that out. That's how I got the first long contest. And the second one, man, I just had a bad, no excuse. I had a bad camp or whatever, but um, I don't know. I went in and just made a stupid decision, but I use those for fuel for the fire. Yeah, Jesus. man. Like I said, takeaways, learning lessons. Yeah. You know yeah. I mean, for the future, for, for when you get up to the higher level and, and you know, those, those, I guess those uh, mistakes can be made again. 
but you won't make them because you experienced them already. August 27th, man. B2 Fighting Series 174 main event. Um, yeah. Man, uh, after that last fight, they were screaming UFC, UFC. I'm pretty sure they're going to do the same thing, Chris. <laughs> yeah, they're going to do that, man. I have a great support system, man. I really do. Yeah. And sometimes I forget that, man. I, you know, the, the day that you're just dog ass tired and you're like, dude, man, training, mm -hmm. training camp's going rough. You kind of have to think about, like, your support system, you know, the family, the reason why you do this stuff. And uh, my support system is really huge. I know that anytime I fight, like, I'm gonna have a, I'm gonna have a fucking, some good people behind me, bro. So that's, they keep that's... me going. So that's that's what I love to do. I love. Yeah, I love you, you do. You do have a good support system, man. Even on short notice, they were there screaming. Case yeah, side. yeah, man. And it, and it helped that uh, it was in Oklahoma City. So any promotions I ever come to Oklahoma City, man, I can help you. <laughs> hit them up. Hit them up. Well, appreciate your time, Chris, man. All the best on this fight and, uh, yeah, knocking on the UFC or whatever whatever lies in your future, man. Uh, all the best. Absolutely. Thank you. I appreciate that.